I said, here's what the real problem is. I said, if you are, first of all, you have to understand how the body works. Uh, you have a sympathetic nervous system that senses everything in the environment. It doesn't matter whether it's wind, noise, car driving by, um, you know, static electricity, EMF, uh, hot water, cold water, textures on furniture, everything. Is so if somebody drops a spoon, then your sympathetic nervous system responds. Your sympathetic response to everything. Yep. And it's, it's part of your fight or flight. Exactly. On the other hand, you have a parasympathetic nervous system. And it functions basically with adrenal secretions. So, and what it does is say, let's say over here, you have a, a threat or a sensation. Then the cortisol comes up and the parasympathetic releases some hormones that modulate the sympathetic response. Calm it down just for a split second so you can make a decision. Is this a danger? And, and do I need to run or do I need to, or should I stay and fight? Sure. It's the old fight or flight. Yep. The problem with that is <clears throat> today we live in uh, environments um, a chronic stress. I mean, chronic, chronic, uh, we live in an elevated sympathetic state, meaning something is chronically setting off our, our, right. we're exposed to everything. Yeah. It's the noise. It's the TV. It's the cell phone. It's the, right. uh, a text comes through. <laughs> you get in the car, you drive to work, you, you go to the grocery store. Everything is causing an elevation of the sympathetic. Now, you've heard of this term that most women suffer from called exhausted adrenals. Sure. What happens is the sympathetic is going to go on forever as long as you live. But the parasympathetic is based on uh, adrenals. Yep. And so if you have chronic sympathetic, then eventually the adrenals are going to become exhausted. They don't have enough resources to maintain the sympathetic. So then you then you have adrenal fatigue, exhaustion, whatever. And then the parasympathetic starts moving um, past that point. Right. And then it, the cortisol becomes elevated. And then that becomes, the cortisol creates anxiety, irritability, uh, inflammation, whatever, and that creates pain right. and creates more stress. And so it's a vicious cycle. Yep. And all this time, the adrenals are shot. Yep. So EMFs, they are one of these things like noise. They are noise. That's what they are. It's like listening to music. That's sure. noise. It's like listening to the freeway. That's noise. Right. And your body will adapt to noise to a degree. It's like uh, when I lived in Evergreen, there was a freeway coming up to Evergreen and there was these beautiful hills. All of a sudden they started building houses up there. And I said, who in the world would ever live there because of all the noise from the freeway? Well, when the Californians move in, they go up there, they buy them, they love them. Noise doesn't They're bother used them. used to it, right, exactly. Yeah. So, so anyhow, we can adapt to these noises. Right. And, but anyhow, if you have uh, the hair on your arms, is an antenna. Sure. I mean, it's going to sense EMF or any other kind of electromagnetic field or a you know stimulus. Sure. Everything is electrical. Yes, everything. The, the most significant EMF is the sun. <laughs> It'll burn you. <laughs> right. Um, but on the other hand, you can't live without it. So, but so anyhow, um, EMFs are a problem if you are ungrounded. If you are grounded then these EMFs can't penetrate your body. They can't, they, they deflect off of you just right. like a Faraday cage. Right. Exactly. And, and um, so EMFs, you reduce them. If you, if you have a lot of EMF, reduce them. You're going to sleep better. You're going to feel a little bit better. Uh, but more importantly, if you want to solve the problem, you really need the most affordable way to solve the problem 